No, I'm not above a cheap gag. Ant-Man, the latest entry in Marvel... Sorry, hold on. Okay, that's better. Ant-Man is the latest entry in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And it's the first one in a while that I've been really nervous about going in to see because I did not think this was going to be a great movie. I didn't think it was going to be bad, but a lot of what I knew about sort of the process of it being made, what went on behind the scenes, and what I was seeing of it, it was reading mediocre to me. Thankfully, uh, I actually came away quite pleasantly surprised. A lot of it comes down to characters and casting. We've got Paul Rudd as Scott Lang, who is an ex-convict who will eventually take on the mantle of Ant-Man, who is actually a hero who's been around for a while, but has basically been in retirement. Now, Paul Rudd is an actor that I've never been totally on board with. I don't dislike him, but he's never struck me as being worth sort of the, the hype and the leading man status that he's earned. This is the first time he really works for me, because he really strikes a very good balance of being competent in the action scenes, incredible as a hero, while having the proper level of sarcasm and sort of self-effacement that this character specifically really needed. Because, I mean, you say Ant-Man and people kind of just snicker. And the best way to diffuse that is to actually intend to make them laugh. And he works very well for that. And he's backed up by a really good supporting cast as well. There's the other members of sort of his crew, you know, some other ex-con characters, who on paper are fairly thin and don't have a lot going on, but all of them are performed with enough energy and with enough chemistry and are fun enough that you like them when they're around. And in some cases, you probably wouldn't mind seeing more of them. You've got Evangeline Lilly playing a fully formed, interesting, well-motivated, and very capable female character who is not just there to be a love interest, which is a huge relief. In fact, a lot of where a love interest would have fit in, that role is kind of taken instead by Scott Lang's daughter. And no, that's not as weird as the sentence I said makes it sound. What I mean is his whole redemptive arc, which normally would have been encapsulated with a romantic interest, is instead encapsulated with his relationship with his daughter. So it becomes a story of father-daughter redemption, which is mirrored with Hank Pym and his daughter, which is the Evangeline Lilly character. Now, Michael Douglas's Hank Pym to me was the MVP of this movie. I loved him from start to finish. I love when we first see him, which actually starts in a flashback with the best de-aging technology I've ever seen put to use. He's able to convey intelligence much in the same way that Robert Downey Jr. does really well with Tony Stark. And his age really works very well because you get, you get that feeling like this guy's got some real history and he's he's probably been through some really nifty adventures, but he's, he's kind of done with that at this point or he'd like to be at any rate. I really hope we get to see more of him. Whether it is in flashbacks, whether it is in current day, I want to see more Hank Pym. And even though he made the character really likable, he didn't lose the darker aspects of the character because we see sort of flashes of his temper and we see the aspects of his character that make him hard to like, which is important to have that in there somewhere, but they didn't go as far with it as uh, the comic books often did. If you read the comic books, Hank Pym is... It's kind of a raging jerk. So they were able to bring in just enough of those aspects to make the character fully layered without actually having him be unlikable. The movie also does a very good job of selling the concept of Ant-Man on an action basis. Because the idea that a hero that gets this big is going to get into a fight and win, it, that's a hard sell. And the movie does a very good job of making that work and making his power feel like a legitimate and viable superpower. Because again, you think, oh, he shrinks. What good is that? Well, they show you. And even when the action gets ramped up, it's balanced with the comedy really nicely. I mean, especially in the climactic fight. And I've actually complained about that before. In Thor The Dark World, it felt like they stopped the action scene in order to make a joke. This time, the jokes are actually very organic to the action scene because, you know, at times when you sort of pull the camera back and get to the reality that they're this big and fighting on a table full of children's toys, yeah, that's kind of funny and it becomes a natural flow of the scene that they're able to inject comedy and that injection of comedy doesn't kill the tension and the pacing of the action scene. It's not a perfect movie though. I could throw nitpicks out there. I won't do that but the big problem is the villain again and that is becoming the recurring problem with a lot of the more recent Marvel movies. In this case we've got Darren Cross and he's functional as a villain, you know, he's intimidating enough and he's a big enough threat, but as a character, God, the guy's just cartoonish. They do some stuff later on to give you a better insight into sort of his personal motivations and maybe a little bit of a logistical explanation as to why he is the way he is, but it comes too late because 
really the second scene we see him and he does something so stupidly cartoonishly over the top villainous that he can't take him seriously as a character. If they had built up to that, showed us the layers first and then showed how far that all pushed him, it might have worked. Ultimately the movie I'm reminded the most of is the first Iron Man movie, which I do love and is one of my favorite movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. However, I can't quite hold this up at the same level, even though it reminded me a lot of that. And I think, you know, in a vacuum, they are about equal for slightly slightly different reasons, but the thing is, is this feels like a movie that should have come out in early in phase one, in the early parts of Marvel, because to get this kind of origin story again and to have it sort of play out the way that it does, it just, it feels like Marvel's gotten past this kind of story. I mean, we're getting things like espionage thrillers with the Winter Soldier and space opera with Guardians of the Galaxy. So to come back with what is ultimately just another origin story, a well done origin story, don't get me wrong. It, it feels slightly like a step back. It feels like a movie out of time and it should have come out about five years ago. I mean, that said, it's not just an origin story. It is also a heist movie. So having that extra layer does help. Ultimately, I like Ant-Man. I'm certainly glad I saw it. I can't say that I love it. Certainly not as much as, you know, my favorite movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but it was worth my time, which I wasn't entirely sure it was going to be. So have you seen Ant-Man yet? If you did, what did you think about it? If you haven't seen it yet, what is your current favorite movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Whatever the case is on either of those questions, drop something down in the comments and let's talk about it. And until next time, this council is adjourned.